Hello PHP folks, uh, this video is an addendum to this one which explains future value.php from page 83, chapter 2. The problem with this video is it was created using the first edition of this book and now we are working with the second edition which has added code to the original one here to address security issues which is good but it also made it more complicated so we're going to leave the original video for you folks to start with and this new video is going to explain some of the differences just to review this page future value this script future values.php looks like this where this is the index page which produces a form where we can enter a value for investment, the yearly rate, a number of years, and when we calculate this page will open up a new script which will make use of the information and calculate it and format it if there is no error with a dollar sign in front. It will place the number a thousand including commas and decimals the yearly interest rate will include a percent sign after the number that we just entered number of years is there just as it was and the future value of course has been calculated and will uh, that was all explained in the original code also um, if we left a blank value and try to calculate that the code will notice that something's missing and will go back to the uh, to the index.php and add this red line here explaining about the interest rate must be a valid number so now let's look at the code um, there's I, I have both the new code which is here and the old code which uh, came with the first edition of the book as you recall from the earlier video uh, the index.php file begins with this doc type which is quite wordy uh, goes on to the HTML tag which is also quite wordy uh, head is pretty much the same body and uh, also we had a, a divide tag with an ID of content uh, things are not made that way anymore with HTML5 which is the reason for the second edition of the book so the new way of doing things now is to simply use doc type HTML. HTML is exactly like this, nothing, head is all the same, and instead of this div, uh, we can now use a main tag, which is now of course going to be referenced in the main.css file under main with this formatting, which was the same as the div equals content. Okay, so this is the new convention in the second edition of this book and HTML5 to begin HTML pages. Now for a more significant modification to this index page is PHP programming in front of the HTML page. It makes sense to have this code here uh, because we know that the index page could be called from display result in case the user have, has left uh, one of the fields blank in which case uh, we want the code immediately to confirm that these three variables coming back do contain a value because if they're null it could cause a problem with PHP so we're going to be using the function is set as explained in chapter 2 the, the job for this function is to confirm that the variable inside of its parentheses is not null. So we're going to say if explanation mark, if not set, then we're going to open the brace and we can do all this in one line since it's so small. Uh, open the brace, close the brace, and inside we're going to simply put an empty string in that variable. An empty string is better than nothing at all. It's, uh, it's not, an empty string is not considered null. 
so same thing with interest rate if interest rate is null we're gonna put an empty string into it and same thing with year the next improvement in this code is how we uh, echo these variables back into the form the old way was simple all we did was echo investment and we were done now we're going to encapsulate this data into another function called HTML special cars also explained in chapter 2 and the job of this function is to minimize the possibility of uh, the user having placed malicious code into that variable okay so get used to that it's not too complicated onward to display results the old way was to retrieve the value from one of our form fields such as investment directly from the global array uh, dollar, dollar sign underscore post now it's a little more complicated we have to uh, use the filter input function also explained in chapter 2 requiring three arguments the first one input post in capital letters refers to the global variable dollar sign underscore post the second argument is the name of the field that we're interested in retrieving from the form and the third variable is this filter which will determine if investment is a float or not if anything does not check out then investment will be populated with false this is why now we can in the first if statement we can create this identical equality with three equal signs and see if investment really does contain the word false if it's true then we can populate the error message with the proper message the rest is pretty much the same the next we just do the else if investment is less or equal to zero and uh, then we go on to interest rate and the years this time the years is also checked as it was not in the original code um, same thing here the error message if it's uh, not blank it means there must be one therefore we're going to include the index page once again and at which point it's going to go straight back to this uh, PHP code remember which verify these variables Then we have the for loop, which uh, figures out the future value, just like the other code. And now the beginning of this HTML page is again simplified. And otherwise, everything's the same. We echo investment format, just as we did in the other code. So this is it. This is it. Thank you very much, and I hope that helps. Good luck.